Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is common misconceptions about electric circuits, and we want to know what are the most common preconceived ideas that cause difficulty understanding circuits, and what's the essential problem with those ideas. Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. In physics, what you believe is very important. Oftentimes, it's the ideas that you believe in and already know that form the greater barrier to learning than the things that you don't know. What preconceptions might you have about electric circuits that could get in your way of understanding? Here's five true-false statements. I'd like you to take a moment to pause the video, read the statements, and identify them as true or false according to your belief. We'll be talking about these throughout the video. When you're ready, press play, and we'll talk. Let's start with two suppositions, things that we believe to be true. The first is that cells or batteries are rechargeable. And the second is that the recharging process involves replenishing or restoring charge that has been somehow used or depleted as a result of the use of that cell in a circuit. If we start with these two ideas, then our thinking logically extends in the following direction. If we start with the idea that a battery or a cell is rechargeable, then therefore that means that a battery or cell must be the source of charge. When it doesn't work, it's out of charge, and what we must do is replenish the amount of charge it has. It also leads to the claim that a charge is being used up or consumed by the devices that are in that circuit. Why else would you have to replenish it if it wasn't getting used up or consumed? The picture of a circuit that these two suppositions present is a, is a picture in which the cell or battery is the supplier of charge and the light bulb or whatever is being used in the circuit is the remover or consumer of the charge. Now, this is a perfectly logical train of thought. I don't disagree with the logic. What I do disagree with is each one of these statements. All of these claims are totally false and contrary to what is being taught, probably by your physics teacher, and certainly by the video tutorial series that you're listening to. I'm sure we've all observed this. You flip the switch on the wall, and the light bulb lights immediately. There's no perceptible time delay between the flipping of the switch and the lighting of the bulb. And if we combine this observation with the belief that the battery or the cell is the source of charge in an electric circuit, it leads to two more wrong turns that can be very harmful in your ability to understand circuits. The first goes like this. If the light bulb lights immediately and the battery or cell is the source of charge, then charge must be moving very, very fast from location A to location B. And as that charge passes through the light bulb from B to C, a good deal of it must be used up because after all, that battery will either be ruined or will have to replenish its charge through a recharger. And then finally, the amount of charge that enters that battery at D is less than what exits at A. The second set of wrong turns goes something like this. A public utility company must be delivering a countless number of electrons. I mean, it must be in the billions of electrons to our homes every day. Because if you think about the appliances that are used in your homes, the computers, the refrigerators, the stove, the heaters, the, the light bulbs, all the things that we use must be consuming a load of electrons that that utility company must be replenishing on a daily basis. These two wrong turns and the three previous ones that we discussed on the previous slide are all part of these, these five true-false statements. I'd like you to take a peek at them and review how did you answer them. Do you have any preconceptions that are actually going to hinder your understanding of electric circuits? As for me, here's my vote they're all false. When I say that batteries are not rechargeable, I usually raise some eyebrows. You have to understand what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you can't buy a battery in the store that is said to be rechargeable. And I'm not saying that you can't take that so-called rechargeable battery and place it in a device that is called a recharger and have the lifespan of the battery extended. I do that with my cell phone every evening. What I am saying is that if rechargeable means having the lost or depleted charge restored or replenished, then batteries are not rechargeable, and it's a real ripoff to call them that. It's not a ripoff to the consumer. It's a ripoff to the physics teacher trying to teach about circuits, and a ripoff to the physics student trying to learn about circuits. Circuits do not consume or deplete or diminish the amount of charge in any way. 
And if the amount of charge is constant, then there would be no need ever to replenish the amount if it's never being lost. If rechargers don't recharge, then let's not call them rechargers. And if rechargeable batteries aren't rechargeable, let's not call them rechargeable. Is that all right? Good. The electrochemical cell supplies the energy that is required to pump the charge from the low potential terminal to the high potential terminal. This movement is a movement against the electric field and as such requires work and energy. This is called energy in. Then the charge that drifts through the circuit eventually reaches the load where that electrical energy is transformed to other forms of energy by the load. If the load is a light bulb, then the energy per coulomb of the charge that is exiting the light bulb is less than what entered the light bulb, and that charge needs an energy boost. The energy boost is supplied by the electrochemical cell, and inside that little canister that we call a cell or battery, are a collection of chemicals that are undergoing an exothermic reaction to produce the energy to give the charge its energy boost. But over the course of time, those reactants become used up and depleted and the energy producing ability of the electrochemical cell is diminished, at which point we either need to throw it away, recycle it, or do something to restore its energy producing ability. Not every battery is rechargeable, but those that are would best be called reversible because they can be reversed. Here's what I mean. When we use such a so-called rechargeable battery or any battery, we're taking the reactant chemicals and we're changing them into products plus energy. It's the energy that is required to run the device. Then after some time, the reactant chemicals have been used up. So what we must do is put that battery or cell inside of a so-called recharger. And during the recharger process, energy plus those products are turned back into reactants. We have reversed the process. It requires energy from some external source. Thus, we have to put it in the so-called recharger so that it can draw energy from the outlet. Such a process would best be called reversible or re-energizable and those batteries upon which this act would best be called reversible batteries and not rechargeable batteries. Here is a summary of today's video. Instead of saying that a cell no longer works because it's out of charge, it's better to say that a cell no longer works because it's out of the energy producing reactants that are required. Instead of saying a cell is a source of charge and the charge that flows originates in the cell, it's better to say that a cell is a source of energy. It pumps the charge that's already present in every wire and every device within the circuit. Instead of saying that charge becomes used up as it passes through circuit elements, it's better to say that electrical energy possessed by the charge is transformed to other forms of energy by those circuit elements. Instead of saying that charge moves at high speeds lighting bulbs instantaneously, it's better to say that charges move very, very slowly, but its motion begins instantly, leading to instant lighting by those charges that are already present in the light bulb. Instead of saying that the utility company supplies millions of electrons to our homes each day, it's better to say that the utility company doesn't supply electrons at all. After all, we don't need them, we already have them. What they supply are millions of joules of energy. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you'll find on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have Minds on Physics missions, concept builders, and a tutorial page, any one of which could help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.